Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. God is seldom early, but he is never late, so I have said for many years. But in reality, God is neither early nor late. He is precisely on time. Nothing demonstrates the importance of precise timing any more than does the birth of Jesus Christ. Had Jesus' birth been either earlier or later, Old Testament prophecies would have gone unfulfilled. Writing to the Galatians in one of his earliest letters, Paul alluded to the miracle behind the miracle, saying, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman made under the law. Now that phrase, the fullness of time, is a poignant one. Almost everyone remembers that Christ was born in the little city of Bethlehem, immortalized by Philip Brooks' hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. But few remember that Mary and Joseph were living in the city of Nazareth, 70 miles to the north of Bethlehem. The Old Testament prophet Micah, writing 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, had singled out Bethlehem of Judah as the place where the Messiah was to be born. Now, any mother recognizes the fact that babies come on their own timetable, and it isn't always easy to predict the timing of their arrival. What were the factors that brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem when they were living a considerable distance away? There were hundreds of variables, and if any one of them had failed, Jesus would have been born in Nazareth far away from the place prophesied by Micah. The scenario began when Julius Caesar was assassinated and his grandnephew Augustus became Caesar. Others were more powerful, but the leadership in Rome chose Augustus because he was young, weak, and they thought could be dominated. But when young Augustus teamed up with Mark Antony and purged the Senate, they were surprised. Turning the tables on the Caesar makers, he quickly became powerful and strong. As Augustus walked around Rome, everywhere he looked, he saw monuments to other people, his predecessor, Julius Caesar, and so forth. It disturbed him. I need to carve out my name in the granite of Italy, he reasoned, and thus the beautification program was launched. Now, building marble monuments costs money, and political advisors know only one way to do that, tax the people. And in the words of Dr. Luke, it came to pass in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Beginning to get the picture, an order was given. A centurion carried it to the harbor. Passage on a ship had to be booked, and in those days the ship was borne across the Mediterranean by the wind which filled the sails. Had strong winds blown, the messenger would have arrived sooner and Mary and Joseph would have been forced to return to the birthplace of Joseph's father too early for Jesus to have been born in Bethlehem. Had the ship taken longer or the order to tax the empire gone out later, it would have all affected the timing of the birth of Christ. The events moving towards the birth of Jesus Christ were like the gears of a fine old Swiss watch. Some were large, others small, but each was connected to another, and they all had to mesh perfectly for the hands of God's clock to point to Bethlehem at the hour of Christ's birth. Now, I have said all of this to say that nothing is a matter of indifference or chance with our Heavenly Father. Those events affect your life, too. Nothing surpasses God's care for you. Nothing catches Him off guard. Whatever your lot, wherever you are, God knows and cares. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.